In this video, we're going to cover the JavaScript array at method. We'll talk about why does it exist? What problem does it solve? How does it work? How does it actually do that? How it compares to something like bracket notation? And then one particular thing you want to avoid when using it. So here we have an array of three strings. These are character names from the TV show Foundation, which I've been watching and is awesome. So if we type names here and then a dot, you can see the at method shows up in VS Code's IntelliSense. Now, if you didn't get this here, if at is not in this list, which it actually wasn't for me, we may need to tell VS Code, specifically its JavaScript language service, to target a different version of JavaScript. Now, if all of that sounded really confusing, don't worry. It is way out of scope for this video. Essentially, you can think about it as it's part of the process that enables VS Code to populate this IntelliSense list. And for our purposes here, all we need to do is create a file. So this jsconfig.json file, you can use the new file creation icon here. And then in that file, that jsconfig.json file, you want to have a compiler options property and then a target property with ES2022, which was what I found had the support for at in that VS Code's IntelliSense. Now, in certain programming languages, you can access array elements not only with zero or positive integers, but you can also use negative integers. So for example, a negative one here would be accessing the last element in this array. So in this case, the string Gail Dornick. Now, if we tried to do that in JavaScript, so let's type out a console log here and let's see what we get. We get undefined, why? So remember that whatever we pass in the brackets here is literally treated as a string property. So we're essentially doing this. And when we look up that string property on this names object, remember that in JavaScript arrays are objects, there is no value defined on that, which is why we get the undefined. So for example, if we did something like this and we defined, say, a string property, if we defined a string property there, let's see what we get. We get the value that we assign to that property in the log. But notice here that we're getting this yellow underline. What does that say? Make it an object if it must have named properties, otherwise use a numeric index here. Yeah, so our linter is complaining about us doing this, and this is because this is not a, a good practice. This will surprise developers, it's not expected. So don't do this. This will cause more issues than it will solve. Now, the usual way to access the last element in an array in JavaScript is something like this. So you get the length of the array, which is in this case three, and then you subtract one. Remember that arrays are zero indexed. So this is zero, one, and two. So length of the array is three, subtract one, which gets us to two, that's the last element. So what the at method allows us to do is instead of having to do all of this names.length and then subtract one, we can do names at and then minus one. And if we log these, notice that we get the same element. So that's really the core of what the at method is for. It's for accessing array elements counting from the end of the array rather than from the beginning. Now, how exactly does this work? So something about at is that when the index that we're accessing is zero or positive, it is literally the same as accessing with the traditional bracket notation. So these literally do the same thing. We're gonna get the same array element. So we get brother day in this case. The difference, as we mentioned before, is when the index that we pass is negative. So how exactly is it doing that? So when the index is negative, it literally takes the length of the array and then adds the index to it. So in our example here, the array length is three and we're adding negative one to that, which gives us two, which is the index 0, 1, 2, last element in our array. Now you might be asking what happens with out of bounds indices? Like what if it's a very large negative number that we pass? Now we can see here, if we add some other logs, these are doing exactly the same thing as the bracket notation. Okay, that's elements at 0, 1, and 2, great. So the difference with at, as we discussed, is we can pass negative indices. And you can see here, 
we will get, there's our element zero, element one, and element two. And you can see here that the negative of the length of the array, so our array length is three, the negative of that gives us the element at index zero. Now, what happens if we keep going? So what if we passed names at negative four? We get undefined. What about on the other side? What if we try to access names at three? So this is the length of the array using at. We get undefined. So if the index that you pass is beyond these bounds in either side, you get undefined. Interesting note, it doesn't even try to access the array element at that index, it simply returns undefined. Now, something to be aware of with at is that if we look at the method signature here, you can see that it expects a number and that makes sense, right? Because when we're accessing an array element, we need some index to say, give me this array and then give me the element at such and such index. The big advantage of at is that it allows us to count from the back of the array, count from the end of the array going that way instead of always from the beginning of the array. However, what would happen if we didn't pass an integer here? Like say, for example, we passed 0.9. Let's see what happens. If we run this, we get Harry Seldon, which is the element at index zero. Why is it doing this? It's doing this because it's converting whatever we pass into an integer. And so in this case, it's truncating, it's getting rid of this 0.9 part. And then what we're left with is the zero. And so we access the array at index zero. Now, why is this a problem? What happens if we pass other values that are not integers? For example, what about all of these? What do you think is gonna happen? I don't know, it's not really obvious what would happen, like false, what, what, what's, what's that gonna turn into, high? Non and null, what are, what are these gonna do? Are these gonna error, are we gonna get undefined? Uh, let's find out. We get the element at index zero, our Harry Seldon element. Hmm, okay. Uh, what if we try this one? Let's go find out. We get, look at that, we get brother day, which is, what is that? That's the element at index one. Why is it doing this? True, when converted to a number, we get one. As in different from false, when converted to a number, we get zero. Yeah, so this is one of those cases where you really want your code to be very obvious in what it's doing. And to me, this is not obvious. Like which element is this gonna access? Is it gonna like truncate the bits of that? And like, is that gonna go convert? Oh, that converts to zero and that converts to one. And what did no one, right? There's all these nuance here. That you don't wanna deal with it. So definitely avoid all of this. When you're looking at your own code two years, three years, five years later, you don't wanna to have to deal with all this nuance. So when using at, the argument that you pass, make sure it's an integer. That's it for this video on the JavaScript array at method. Make sure to like and subscribe, comment, let me know what topics you want to hear about. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.